grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to welcome you to another Freedom Moment. It's Sunday, January 29th, 2023. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and bless you and praise you. We thank you, Lord God, for another day, another opportunity to be in your hands. Lord God, a safe place, a place, Lord God, where we can get mercy and grace, where we can come to you and ask for forgiveness. Lord, speaking of forgiveness, wash us and cleanse us so that we can be used by you. Vessels, pure, Lord God, in your hand. Father, we thank you once again for protecting us. Speaking of protection, Lord, we ask for protection, Lord God, on those overseas. Lord God, our men and women in uniform, Father, we pray for our nation, Lord God. We pray for peace. This week, there's a lot of turmoil going on, but Father, we pray that the spirit of peace through your body would come to play in this situation, Lord. We thank you, Father, for what only you can do. Lord, be with us right now as we open up your word, as we worship you. Lord, we're looking for a refreshing, Lord God, a restoral of strength and joy. Father, we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, everyone in agreement said, Amen. Looking for fellowship, prayer, or Bible study? You can get in touch with us at home or on the go. Just go to www.freedomfellowshiprb, the RB stands for Rockaway Beach, dot org, or you can catch us for updates on Twitter at Freedom Rockaway. See you there. Scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. We're looking at Genesis, the 32nd chapter. We're reading from the New International Version. Genesis chapter 32, beginning at verse 22. That night... Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please, tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. The text of today's message is taken directly from our scripture lesson for this morning. We're looking at Genesis chapter 32, and we're taking one verse from that scripture lesson, Genesis 32 and verse 24. Let's get a reminder of what it said. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God, because you care so much for us that you're always trying to speak to us. You're always trying to relay a message to us. You're always trying to give us directions and wisdom. Father, that wisdom is going to bring us uh, 
through our days, our struggles, our good times, our bad times, Lord God. We thank you for that wisdom. Lord God, help us to devour your word. Help us, Lord God, to digest your word. Help us, Lord God, to learn to grow by it. Father, to be more in the image of your dear son. Father, we thank you once again. You want to teach us so much, you've given us your Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit, have your way. Send down that anointing. It makes teaching easy, makes understanding even easier. Father, we'll give you all the glory and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Everyone in agreement said, amen. Yes, Jacob was on his way to Canaan. And it's amazing because God meets him and wrestles with him wrestled with him. Praise God. Wow. Wrestled. What, what is wrestling? Well, it's, it's where, basically when one individual strives to obtain a position of advantage over their opponent. Yeah. You know, God is willing to wrestle with us. Amen. Because he wants to gain the advantage and, and look, lead us in different ways. Sometimes he's got to wrestle certain things out of us. God was wrestling with Jacob. If you go back and you read the entirety of the story, it was the Lord himself wrestling with Jacob. That's why Jacob said, what's your name? And God was like, don't worry about my name. Your name needs to change. J Jacob was wrestling with God. Hey, listen, Jacob had faith. Hey, praise God. Jacob had faith. He was willing to take God at his word, right? He had faith. And remember, we walk by faith, not by sight, right? And so Jacob, remember, he had faith. Jacob, this fantastic patriarch, he believed that if he walked with God, he would inherit the promises. Hey, that's key. Because remember, we believe that if we walk with God by faith, we will inherit his promises. And it's very interesting because if you go back and you read the entirety of the story, it says that the night before Jacob crosses over Jordan into Canaan, remember, into the promised land, the very promise of God, before, the night before he goes over into the promised land, God wrestles with him. Why? You got you to gotta ask yourself that, right? Put on your, your spiritual thinking caps. Why would God wrestle with him the night before he's ready to go off into the promised land, into Canaan? It's simple. This is what I believe. It's really by wrestling that we keep the promises. <laughs> Let me say that again. It's by faith that we inherit the promises, but it's by wrestling that we keep the promises. Need a title for today's message. It's training camp. Hey, Amen. Hey, hey, that's what we're all about. God's training camp. Huh? Hey, in every season, he's trying to train us to be more and more like him. Praise God. And, and look, training is key. You might say, hey, pastor, why is training uh, key in, in this Christian life? It's simple. You'll only perform up to the level that you've trained. <laughs> Let me say it again. You'll only perform up to the level that you've trained. If you haven't trained well, if you haven't had good training, guess what? When it comes down to the performance time, wow, you're really going to do lousy. Amen. God has a training camp. So, so that we can maximize our faith performance, right? And we can keep his promises that we inherit. That's what God's training camp is meant to do for us. Not just to get saved, hey, but to stay saved. Hey, to hold on to the things that God has given us. To keep hold on them. Amen. Not just to hear his word, but to keep his word. Praise God. So let's ask our questions then. What does training camp do for us? Huh? That's what we really need to know. What do we get out of God's training camp? Well, here's number one. First and foremost, here's what you get a chance to do. 
to change your character. That's what training camp will do for you. Amen. God's training camp will change your character. Paul writes to the church in Corinth in his second letter in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Listen to what he says. Therefore, very familiar uh, passage, right? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Wow, pastor, that's incredible. Hey, listen, we're not talking about the outer man. We're talking about the inner man, the character that you have. What's inside of you? Look, when you're in Christ, when he says all things have become new, look, if you were bald before you met Jesus, guess what? You're going to be bald after you meet Jesus. Amen. If you were wearing glasses before you met Jesus, hey, chances are you're going to be wearing glasses after you met Jesus. huh? So what's new and what becomes new? Your character. Jacob went to that training camp, right? He went from reputation. Come on. He went from reputation, which was what Esau thought about him, his brother Esau. Remember, his brother Esau was really upset that he had, had stolen the, the, the blessing. Huh? He had already duped him out of the birthright with the lentils. Go back and read the whole story. But listen, reputation, that was what Esau thought about him. He moved from that to character. You know, character was what God extracted from him. Hey, look, what did that wrestling match do? It, extract, it extracted something from Jacob. It gave, watch this, it gave Jacob the understanding that he had holding power. Go back and read it. He was holding on. He wouldn't let go. God developed holding power in Jacob. Is God trying to develop holding power in you? Huh? Remember, he went from, and you go back and you read the story, he went from holding on to Esau's heel at birth to holding on to God. Amen. Hey, that's what he did. God changed his very character. He went from holding on to Esau, Esau's heel at birth, to holding on to God. Jacob's character training, what was it all about? Hey, look, you go back and you read, in Genesis 31, right, when he meets Laban, his, his father-in-law, and he's, he's arguing with Laban, right, uh, you think about it. Jacob had went through a lot. And you know something? Many times, God's training for our character is to put us through a lot of different things. Yeah. Hey, if you're going through something, it's probably because God is training you and developing your character. Hey, struggles make strong people. Amen. You going through some struggles? Look at the struggles that Jacob went through to develop his character, right? He said in, in Genesis 31, he said, I've been, he said this to Laban, I've been in your house 20 years I served you 14 years for your two daughters. Remember, he got duped. The first seven years, he was supposed to get Rachel, and he wound up getting Leah, and then he worked seven more years just to get Leah. He, he 14 years he worked for the two daughters, and six years to get some uh, herd, some cattle, some flock. Yeah, six extra years. Now, what was God uh, teaching Jacob? How was God changing Jacob's character through that that situation, that problem, huh? It's simple. God was teaching Jacob to do unto others. Remember, Jacob was a con man, and then God was teaching him how to be an honest and sincere individual. Amen. God will change your character. How does he do it? Training camp. Is God working on your character? Only you could tell. Come on. Here's another thing God will do in his training camp. He'll erase your past. Praise God. Woo, do you need your past erased? <laughs> the second I met Christ, he had to erase a lot from my past, huh? Paul writes this to the church in Philippi. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, he says to them, he says, One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Yeah. Hey, look. Do you need your past erased? Forgetting, he says, forgetting those things which are behind. That means erasing them. 
Wow. Jacob was training, remember? He was training to go from con man to strong man. <laughs> yes, teaching him how to hold on to God. From con man, because remember, he was a swindler. Jacob means someone who, who is a con man, a swindler, someone who, who uh, uh, goes from underneath and, 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 and pulls down. Yes, he went from Jacob, watch this, to Israel, one who strives with God and succeeds. God was teaching him how to hold on. Hey, look, what was Paul's training? Paul, the apostle, remember? His name was Saul of Tarsus. God was training him. He writes about it in Galatians chapter one, his first letter to the church in Galatia. He says this in verse 23. He says, I was known as the man who formerly persecuted the church and now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. Wow, Paul had his terrible past of persecution erased. Pastor, what are you trying to say? God's trying to train us. Remember last week we spoke about the blind man in John chapter nine, right? The blind man was in Jesus's training camp. Praise God. That's what was happening with that blind man. He was in the Lord's training camp. Listen to what Jesus said to him after spitting on the ground and making clay and putting it on his eyes, right? He said, go wash. And he didn't just say in any water. He said in the pool of Siloam. Siloam is all the way across town. Wow, what training, what a challenge. Hey, but you know something? He came back and watch this. His past was erased. Listen to what the man said to the people in the temple. He said this, I was blind, but now I see. Hey, he's erased my past. I was blind, but now I see. Hey, man, that's what training will do for you. Training will open up your eyes to the future, huh? Paul talks about training when he writes again to the, the church in Philippi, go, uh, you can go one chapter before this actual text, right? Philippians chapter two and verse 12. Listen to what he says. He says to the, to the church, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Interesting, he uses the word work out. Yeah, train. It takes training, huh? For you to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Look, Saints, God's trying to erase your terrible past and give you an incredible future in the Lord. How does he do it? He trains you. Amen. He's, trained in your, he's training your mind and your heart and your character. Praise God. What else is his training camp doing for us? And this is very, very powerful. He's training us to address our fears. Look, you'll address your fears in that training camp. Hey, hey, sometimes training will, will teach you huh, that you didn't have to be afraid of certain things. Hey, Amen. God's training camp. Listen to what Paul writes to the young pastor, Timothy. In 2 Timothy, his second letter to Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 7, he says this, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Wow. God has not given you that spirit of fear. Hey, so how does he work that spirit of fear out of you? Training camp. It takes training to develop, watch this, power and love and a sound mind. By the way, that word sound mind there, it's really a mind that's made up. <laughs> yeah. In order for you to make up your mind, you got to have proper training. There's some people, and we're looking at it now, their training is so off that they can't make up their mind. They don't have a sound mind. Hey, look what happened in Memphis. Those officers, huh? Wow. What kind of training? That's what's being questioned right now. Their training. What kind of training did they get? That they had such fear of this one kid. That they didn't realize that they had more power than this kid. They didn't have to use so much power. And what happened to their love, huh? What happened to their sound mind, their inability to make up their mind, to make a proper decision? Training, training will help you huh, to get rid of your fears and make the right decisions. Get rid of that spirit that God hasn't given you. Look, God has not given us fear. He's given us power and love 
and a sound mind. Hey, maybe you're just afraid of failure. huh? And a lot of people are just afraid of failing. But let me tell you something. With proper training, if you go into God's training camp, you learn one thing. And this is what I had to learn. And I learned this. It took years, right? Years of training. To embrace my failures. <laughs> Amen. I, I learned to embrace my failures. Because you know something? One teacher told me, you have to embrace your failure before you can embrace your success. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You got to be able to take failure before you can take success. So I've learned and I've, I've learned to say, hey, you know something? I'm not perfect. And, and I've made mistakes. And you know something? I'm learning from my mistakes. I continue. So don't be afraid of failure. Is God trying to teach you? Huh? Are you going through training right now so you could just get rid of the fear of failure? Have you failed a couple of times and now God's trying to tell you, you can make it up. You can make it back. You can do it. Praise God. Remember, Jacob was training to get rid of the fear. Watch this. The weight of the fear of death. Yeah. Jacob was training to get rid of fear. Remember, he was afraid that Esau and Esau's men were going to kill him. So he had divided up his wives and his kids and sent them in different directions and sent, sent gifts ahead to Esau. Remember? Go back and read it. Fear. He had a fear. Watch this. That God was leading him to the slaughter. <laughs> yes. Yes. Have you ever thought that God was leading you down the wrong way and that you were going to get hurt? You were afraid because you didn't trust? Look, build some trust. God is trying. All of the training. Do you trust the trainer? Huh? The one who's training you to address your fears? Is God bringing you through certain things and certain experiences so that you can get rid of your fears? Huh? Remember, when I was a kid, I was afraid of the dark. <laughs> yeah, many of us were. But you know, I had to learn. Huh? And God had to put me through some of my worst fears and worst anxieties in order to build trust in him. It's all about training. And you know something? Truthfully, fear of death is actually wrestling with trusting God in eternity. Yeah. What's going to happen when I close my eyes in this world? Will I wake up in that new world where his kingdom is? Hey, that's a matter of trust. Huh? Yeah. When you can embrace death, <laughs> when you can address it and say, okay, hey, look, hey, look, it's appointed, the Bible says, unto men. We have an appointment with death. It's appointed for us once to die and then the judgment. Hey, get over it. You know something? Get over the fact that you will eventually die and start living now. Hey, hey. because you might be afraid of the future. That might be your one situation. Listen, resurrection power. That's what Jesus came for, to get rid of the fear of death. In Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews in the second chapter it says this, that Christ came to free those held in slavery by the fear of death. Do you have fear of the end? Hey, don't worry about it. God's got a new beginning for you, but you can only know that if you go through that training camp that he's got for you. Let's get that takeaway point. God's training you and me to succeed. Praise God. God is in training. He Listen, he's training us so that we will not only receive his promises, we'll maintain them. Yeah. Look, Jacob became one, a person that could hold on. Huh? He went from being Jacob to Israel, somebody that can hold on to God and God's promises. God is training us so that we will not only receive his promises, we'll maintain them. We'll hold on. Why? Why is he doing all this? It's simple. His training camp is to prepare your future. <laughs> yes. He's preparing your future. That's what this is about. Amen. Listen to what the writer of Hebrews writes. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 11. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Yeah. At the present time, it's painful. Look, listen to what he says. Discipline. He uses the word discipline. He uses the word painful. And watch this. He ends with the word trained. Yeah. If you go through discipline, 
that is painful, guess what? You will be trained. Pastor, what are you trying to say? Hey, jot this down. All training, say it again, all training is for the future, not the present. All future, all future is governed by your training. And guess what? All training is for the future. It's not for your present time period. Hey, you better know, listen, you better know how to use a fork before the meal, not after the meal. <laughs> yes. Yeah, are you prepared for the meal? Then you really know how to use the fork. Huh? Because it's no good after you finish the meal to learn how. You're training ahead of time so that you can utilize the tools that God has given you right. What I'm trying to say is, are you reading and training with your Bible now? Huh? If you are training right now with your Bible, you're reading and you're praying and you're, you are preparing for your future. You're not going to be blindsided. You know why? Because God has given you a heads up. That's what his word is for. His word is for training you. Amen. What am I trying to say? It's about where you're headed, not where you are now. Amen. All of this training that God is putting you, all of the situations you've been going through are just training. We just finished reading about Joseph, right? We're reading about Joseph right now in our, in our uh, uh, congregational Bible study. We're reading through the Bible uh, the whole year, right? And we're up to Joseph right now, the story of Joseph. All that Joseph went through, being sold into slavery, being uh, jailed for so many years, and then he took over, char he took charge of, of Egypt during a famine. All of that was about where he was headed, and he understood that. That's why when we read Job, remember Job, Job was a guy that really suffered, but at the end of Job, it says, Job 42, it says this, God restored to Job what his losses were when he prayed. God restored Job's losses. And then it says, and God gave Job twice as much as he had before. Look, God was just preparing Job for double. Hey, you mean to tell me God took away what Job had in the beginning so that God could bless him with double in the end? Yeah, that's what it seems like, huh? God's preparing your future. Are you going through training? Yeah, amen. That's what you need to know. Are you reading your Bible? Because you know, there is a future ahead. Remember, Jacob's training was all about his future bouts, the things that he was going to fight fight with in the future. Not just uh, Esau, his brother, not just wrestling with God, but God's wrestling with him was about all of Jacob's future bouts, all of his future challenges. Hey, what, what, what things did Jacob go through eventually? Well, try this. He went through the rape of his daughter, Dinah. He went through the death of his wife, Rachel. He went through the death of Joseph. Remember, he believed Joseph was dead for years, right? He went through the famine. Remember, while Joseph was in Egypt. And then he went through the possible loss of Benjamin. Because remember, they took Benjamin back to Egypt with them because Joseph had said, I'm not going to give you any more grain unless you show me your younger brother, which was his brother, right? Look, are you in God's training camp? God's doing all of this because he's preparing you for your future in Christ. My friends, do you need the peace of God? the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the salvation of God through Christ Jesus, I challenge you to humble yourself before him now in the privacy of your home and talk to him. Ask him for forgiveness of your sins and invite him to be in charge of your life through the Lord Jesus. Trust him because he sees, he hears, and he'll respond to your honest prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you, blessing you and thanking you again for all of the things that we've been through. Lord, so many negative things, but so many positive things. So many situations you've brought us through. Help us, Lord God, to look back to see how far you've brought us from and know that you'll never leave us or forsake us. You haven't brought us this far to abandon us. Lord, thank you for your training camp. Thank you, Lord. You're preparing us. You're making us more in your image. 
and usable by you. Father, go with us this week, blessing us on every side from those things seen and unseen till we come back again and worship you, Father. We ask this simply in Jesus' name. Everyone in agreement said, Amen. Remember, John 8, 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed.